oh, the burdens of being a maker. We always get tasked with random things like, hey, make a wooden tray as a gift to give to those random people over there. Okay, well, I don't have a design and I don't have a plan. So I guess I'm just gonna start with materials. I want my tray to be a little bit thicker than the material that I have. Well, I have thicker material, but I don't wanna cut it up to make a tray. So I'm gonna use this regular four quarter board and essentially I'm just gonna cut it into a bunch of strips and I'll take those strips, turn them over on their edge, re-glue them all together. That'll give me the thickness that I am looking for. Sort of making up this pattern on the fly. I've got my walnut and now I'm thinking having stripes within that walnut, but maybe stripes within stripes. So I got this thick piece of, of maple here and typically I wouldn't cut up a big slab like this, but I really love this linear grain right down the sides. I like how it flows there. And this particular piece of maple just seems to be the right color that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna cut this into moderately thin pieces. So I can have walnut and then a piece of maple and then a thin piece of walnut and then a piece of maple and then more walnut. And I don't know, we'll see how many I end up putting in this thing. I've been using different clamps for panels and you know, I use parallel clamps, I've used pipe clamps. And for a while now, I've used these dudes. These are from Rockler. There's other brands out there too, I, I would imagine. And ooh, it's a lot of glue. And so far they've been really good. I would say that maybe the downside is that because the head latches into these holes on the top, sometimes I won't have it latched like into the hole and I'll go to screw it and I'll realize it's not latched. It'll start sliding and then it catches. That's a me thing, that's not, that's not on the clamps. The plus side though is they're very light. They're easy to move around. They have a big clamp head and it goes all down to the base. These things are awesome for thin panels, which uh, I do a lot. So I don't know, I, I'm really happy that we have so many options that are available to us so we can figure out the ones that kind of work best for us. I'm gonna let him dry for a bit and then mill this guy flat. And while that is drying, I'm gonna start working on a template because I wanna cut a big hole out of this thing. That's a pretty looking board. Now I wanna uh, carve a big uh, hole, uh, trench, gutter out of the middle of it. So to do that, I'm gonna use my router. So I need to make a template that I sit on top of this. I take my router and I can, you know, do my thing. Take them down, do your, do your stuff. Now, I also want to have a pretty thin edge here on the sides. So if I put a template on it, it's going to be kind of like, you know, not super stable. So what I'm going to do is take some MDF, make a box that so locks this thing in place, put the template on top of that, kind of gives me the best of both worlds. I have a stable work surface for me to route, but also it keeps this dude in place and doesn't, you know, go flying all over. Template is done, only took a couple minutes and it just slides right on top of my board here. Before I start routing it, I'm actually gonna remove all this material with the drill press. I'm gonna take a big four stir bit, I'm gonna drill as much material as I can do. Just gonna take a little bit of pressure off of that router bit so I'm not actually routing all that material. I'm gonna drill as many holes as I can, just try not to go all the way through the bottom of that, remove as much material as possible. I got a router bowl bit, it's got a, a bearing here. I've used mine for a long time, so the bearing looks a little bit rough, but I threw a little oil on it. It's still good. But that bearing's gonna ride on the inside of my template, route all this out, and make this easier so my router doesn't just like, you know, dive uh, headfirst into the tray. 
bid my own base plate. This is just a piece of acrylic. I drilled some holes so it matches up to my uh, router. Give me a good solid workspace, work surface, so I don't have a disaster. Fingers crossed. I did a lot of routing and a whole lot of sanding, but it looks pretty good. This needs a, a handle. Well, two handles, it's not, it's not a, a bag. So, I don't know, I'm making this up on the fly. And I'm thinking maybe something that curves, that mimics this inside part, but curves up. So I'm gonna go over to the table saw and just remove some material uh, out of the way on both ends. Then I can go over to the router table and maybe I could do like a round over that rounds down towards the bottom and then also do a curve that goes up towards the handle. So it kind of makes like a, like an S profile. We'll figure it out. I'm just completely making it up. Took some time to sand the tray, and then I sanded some more, and then a little bit more. There was a lot of sanding involved with this one, but it is smooth, it does look good, so I get to apply finish to this. Now I'm gonna apply finish that I usually do, which is a hard wax finish, I like to use Osmo. I apply it on a lot of my, my projects. So here's the plan, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna really rub it into the grain really good. Basically cover this entire thing, and then I'm gonna wipe off all of the extra. I don't wanna have any of that stuff sitting on the surface at all. I'll let it dry for maybe eight, 10, 12 hours. Come back, apply another coat the same way. And again, make sure you get any of that extra stuff off of it. None of it can be sitting on the surface because then it just dries into this like sticky mess and I don't want to have any part of that. After the second coat, I'll buff it really well and see if I need to apply a third coat. Sometimes I will, a lot of times I don't because the second coat is just exactly what I'm looking for. I ended up applying three coats of finish to this one, and now it has this really nice heirloom quality look to it. And while it tips over to a glossy sheen, it feels like you're touching the wood. It doesn't feel like a film finish, and that's exactly what I was looking for. Frankly, this looks so beautiful, I think I'm about to keep it for myself, and I don't know if I really like those folks enough to give them something this nice. I'll make them an uglier gift a little bit later on. And to meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.